Okay, so let's talk about heterocycles. First of all, what is a heterocycle? A heterocycle is actually something we've been working with since the first exam. It is a ring that contains elements other than carbon, and that is aromatic. Meaning, for example, this right here is an aromatic ring that involves elements other than carbon, namely oxygen. The oxygen is able to resonate throughout that ring and it's fully conjugated, and if you were to do a pi electron count, you would find that there are six pi electrons altogether. Two contributed by the oxygen, plus four from the double bonds of the ring. So this, that is one example of an aromatic ring that you can deal with. And most commonly, the heterocycles you will see in your questions will be of the following. A five-membered ring with an oxygen in the top, on the top that is conjugated with double bonds. And then variations of this with nitrogen, and sulfur. These are all, for, our, for all we care, these are pretty much the same in the way they're going to react, but we'll talk about that in the next video. For now I want to focus on a specific type of reaction called nucleophilic aromatic substitution when dealing with heterocycles. And for most of the question I've, questions I've seen regarding this topic, I have seen a heterocycle that looks like this. Essentially a benzene ring, so a six carbon ring, or a six membered ring with uh, with three double bonds interspersed, or that are conjugated with each other, and then a nitrogen as instead of one of the six carbons. And so the way nucleophilic aromatic substitution works is as follows. You will see a nitrogen in your ring, and you will have a leaving group on that ring as well. Now, that leaving group is typically going to be a halogen, chlorine, bromine, maybe even iodine. And the rule is that leaving group, if you want to replace it, must be in either the ortho or the para position. So one of these three positions relative to the nitrogen. Now, I'm only going to look at one at a time. Because the way this reaction works is the same for all three, but why give us extra arrows when we don't need them? So the way it works is basically you're going to have, say, one leaving group in the ortho or para position. And over your arrow, you're going to have something with lone pairs or a negative charge that can come in and attack where that leaving group is connected and replace it. Meaning, let's say it's just an OH minus, for example. So the way this mechanism works is the thing over the arrow with the electrons will come in and attack the carbon that has the leaving group. And then the electrons from the carbon-carbon double bond will resonate until they end up on the nitrogen. The chlorine can't just get kicked out right away. We learned in Orgo 1 that leaving groups on double bonds are very, very bad at leaving. The bond that connects this chlorine to this double bond is super, super strong. So you can't just break it that easily. But this resonance will allow for things to happen the way we want. What you'll get through resonance is these double bonds remain the same. But now the electrons have been pushed onto that nitrogen, and the nitrogen becomes negative. This carbon will now have a chlorine and the OH that did the attack. Now why does this happen? Again, we can't just kick a leaving group off of a double bond like we've seen in other, uh, like, like this. The chlorine will not want to leave, the bond is too strong. But by resonating this double bond over to the nitrogen, this is no longer on a double bond, and so it's a lot easier to kick out. The second half of the reaction is just the nitrogen will take those electrons that it got, resonate back down, and kick the chlorine off. Ultimately, what happens is the leaving group is replaced by what's over the arrow. Nothing too crazy. So we get that double bond back down there. And now instead of a chlorine, we have an OH. Okay? And that's the general gist of any nucleophilic aromatic substitution on a heterocycle. And again, typically this is the one I've seen in all the practice problems they've shown us. So let's make one a little more complicated and just address how that should work. Let's say I have the following heterocycle. Once again, a, let's put the nitrogen here, a little on there, there, and there. And over the arrow, I'm going to react with say, NH3. 
Okay. NH3 isn't negative, but we know it has lone pairs, so it'll be able to do its hex the way we want. Now I'm going to put two leaving groups on this molecule, one in the para position and one in the meta position relative to that nitrogen. And we're going to figure out what the major product looks like. Now if we want to go the quick and easy way, we know that what should happen is the leaving groups that are in the ortho or para position will be replaced by what's over the arrow. So here I have this nitrogen, meta to it is the leaving group. And again, meta para to it in this case is this leaving group. We know that only leaving groups that are ortho or para can be replaced, so what's going to happen is this NH3 can only replace one of these two chlorines. It would replace the one on the bottom in the para position. And so you would expect to have, this is your answer. Now, I wrote NH2 instead of NH3 because if it was NH3, it would be NH3 positive and it would just end up getting deprotonated to NH2. But just for completion's sake, let's actually draw out the mechanism of how we get from this to this. So the first step is what we saw before. The nitrogen's lone pairs will come in, attack the carbon with the leaving group, but rather than the leaving group popping off, the double bond has to resonate up and into the nitrogen. We could resonate further around the ring, but that won't help us. We want that negative charge to get on the nitrogen for this reaction to work, because if we resonated it further, we'd end up getting a carbon minus, and comparing carbon minus to N minus, we know nitrogen is more electronegative, and therefore it's the more stable and more important resonance structure. So long story short, just make sure you resonate to the nitrogen in the ring. And so what we'll have is N minus on a single bond. This double bond has resonated over here. This double bond has been unchanged. We still have the chlorine in the meta position. And now we have the chlorine and the NH3 positive. Now I'm drawing out the hydrogens. And arguably, this would probably get deprotonated at some point in the mechanism. I'm going to save it till the end because it ultimately won't change the end result. Namely, what's going to happen next is this nitrogen will resonate down, resonate this double bond over, and kick out our leaving group. And you may ask, why isn't the nitrogen getting kicked out? But like I said, there's probably a deprotonation step happening here before I kick things out. I'm just focusing on the main mechanism because not everything that attacks will have hydrogens that need to get pulled off. That's what we're getting is almost the product that we were expecting. We'll have the aromatic ring reformed with all the double bonds in the places they were originally. Double bond there, double bond here, and double bond here. <clears throat> The chlorine in the metaposition is untouched and unchanged, and now we have NH3 positive on the bottom attached in place of it, in place of the paracorine. And so the last step is simply to deprotonate it. So some base, possibly another one of these NH3s, comes in, grabs that hydrogen, the electrons swing down to the nitrogen, and you'll get your final product. And beyond that, there's not much I think they can ask you about how these reactions work. So if you've got the basic mechanism down and you know what to expect and you know your rule about you can only replace ortho or para groups to the nitrogen in the ring, you should be fine for this kind of uh, question.